Nick, can I get an Antwerp bass line? They approved. They were like, yes, that's us. That's our bass line. For our final But Is It Jazz session for 2017, we welcome the mighty Soweto Kinch, presenting music from his most recent like album, Nonogram. Let me freestyle here, demonstrate. It's really, really easy, get it straight. Somebody give me a word with an A. Available. <laughs> See me afterwards. <laughs> Actually, can you hit the lights up a little? No, I'm joking. Uh-huh. I, I was joking, I was joking. Keep him down. <laughs> That's amazing. Check. Wow. Available. I came to play with you. On the mic, microphone, get, get the net right here. Because I don't have a pen. I'm here freestyling with a couple of the friends. I'd like to get down from beginning to end. Somebody on this side, give me a word with an N. Necrophilia. Yeah, he actually said that. So Will's like, how do, oh, that word, I love that word. I don't want to ask too many questions, guys. All I can say is as soon as this show is finished, I'm leaving out of the back really fast. I didn't really conceive of jazz as a career until about a year after I'd left Oxford and got a call from Gary Crosby, uh, the leader of Jazz Jamaica at the time, who offered me a gig in Singapore. Which was like, I was like, oh, what? You're going to pay me to go to Singapore? You know, from that point and for the following six months, I started to reframe what was possible and to think, okay, I might not be as prodigiously accomplished on my instrument yet, but this is a path that I'm, I want to pursue. This is a really interesting moment for one of a better term for British jazz. I've been part of a couple of renaissances and new births, uh, the new British wave. And I remember doing a photo shoot with Gwyneth Herbert and Amy Winehouse and Jamie Cullum like maybe 15 years ago already. Um, and then before that, of course, you had Steve Williamson generation, you had Courtney Pine, you know, and Robert, in fact, in between them, Robert Mitchell and Jason Yard, etc. Afterwards, you know, so I don't think that there is anything super new. What's interesting about this moment we're celebrating black British jazz musicians is that they're more predominantly African Caribbean in a way that I think hasn't been the case since perhaps the 80s. So it's a case of a baton being passed on and a, a gradually, you know, as Winton says, tradition breeds excellence and we have our own bespoke tradition that's connected to, to the tree. But I think it's a very interesting uh, point in time because both generationally and in terms of the uh, things that are available, the, the reference points that are available to young musicians to create new sounds. I'm really encouraged by like Jay-Z's album that just came out and Eminem dropping albums and musicians and artists who've kind of had a golden age but are still finding relevant things to say now. I think that's by virtue of how more, much more politically connected we are and the fact that young people want to reference older things sometimes as well. The flip side of that is young jazz musicians have never had such a rich and varied palette with which to draw from. But now with YouTube and Spotify and all the tools that are there to help transcribe and I think the growth of a community, I'm really excited to see, you know, intergenerational conversations in music.
think the idea of genre still has some validity. It helps us understand certain musical traditions and inheritances in a way that we wouldn't necessarily to give weight and, and credibility. But I think it's important for artists and particularly promoters and audience to engage with these genres critically, to look at what really brought them about. Increasingly, I've been looking back through music history, through jazz, rag, rock and roll, right up into hip hop, and realizing that often these genres are just ways for people to co-opt something, usually African in origin, <laughs> sort of erase the Africans from the picture, like scratch them out and make money, commodify it, sell it, often without the practitioners or the people who originated it. So in that context of appropriation, like I think we have to be really careful to give credit to the creators. So I think it's time to celebrate like all of humanity coming together in these art forms and constantly challenging whatever a genre is. jazz it's me on multiple levels there's a personal thing in which i've just this year started becoming a presenter on radio three in the uk for a show called jazz now so you know there's a community there's a definite tradition and definite inheritance and i'm very proud to be part of that of that world i also recognize more of a continuum than originally oh this starts now with congo square that's the beginning of jazz and you know miles davis and fusion that's the end of jazz I have a much more elastic, I think, view of how these traditions interleave, how, how they relate to each other. Um, so I think it's more fruitful to see things in terms of traditions. It's going to make my artistic pronouncements all that more impactful and have so much more weight if I know I have my ancestors behind me backing that up. This is definitely about to be the strangest freestyle ever recorded by me anyway. I, I don't know. Oh. I got the phone, I'm holding control, and now I'm gonna freestyle on this microphone, yeah. Before I go, before I hold the bone, I just need a soul clap so I can get in the zone. Uh, uh, wow! Woo. When I say, what is it? You say jazz. But is it? But is it? I'm about to do my thing and I'm about to spaz. But is it? Not really sure if it spits with the facts, but is it? What is it? I'm gonna get exquisite while I spit some facts and yes, but is it? What? 